this is Coach Petty HPE with another Year 12 uh, video. For more Year 12 videos and other pieces of information, you can get that at the website www.coachpettyhpe.com. So we're up to Core 2, uh, Factors Affecting Performance, and this is Key Idea 2, How Can Nutrition and Recovery Strategies Affect Performance? And this is the dot point on supplementation. There's four different supplements the syllabus looks at and the right hand side is all about uh, you making critically analyzing the evidence for and against supplementation for improved performance. So during this video I'll have a look at each one of those supplements and I'll give you some pros and cons which in effect is what that doing is you critically analyzing each supplement. So let's get into it. Um, a bit of an overview of supplementation just in general before we get to each of the individual supplements themselves. Um, supplements from even uh, the non-elite athlete right up to the elite athlete, they are widely used. But um, even amongst the experts, such as the scientists down at the AIS, their effectiveness is often debatable whether they do actually make a difference or not. And one of the big questions I asked is, can a balanced diet achieve what supplements claim to do? So what the syllabus is, asks us to do and what's going to happen in this video, um, we're going to examine the pros and cons before any supplement is taken. So there is no evidence that supplements with vitamins and minerals, when it comes to vitamin in, and minerals, enhance performance, except in cases where a pre-existing deficiency exists. So there are the four pictures down the bottom there, the four different types of supplements we're going to look at. So let's start off with vitamins and minerals and with a focus on minerals. So you can make this a link to option three if your class has stu uh, studied sports medicine and the it, uh, sorry the factors associated with female athletes. And one of those factors is iron deficiency. And the iron deficiency is uh, quite a problem, particularly for endurance athletes. Um, and women in particular, when they hit their childbearing bearing years, um, in many cases become iron deficient. And why iron is important is, is it's a big factor in the process of getting oxygen to the working muscles and making them work more effectively. So for female athletes with iron deficiency, this will cause them to actually um, work at a slower rate. So that means they can't run as quick or swim as quick as what they would normally be able to because they're iron deficient. And particularly that's uh, more common for female athletes who are involved in heavy training or in endurance sports. So here is one example where a supplement could be advantageous for female athletes who are iron deficient and also are participating in endurance events. The second uh, thing female athletes need to consider is being calcium deficient. Um, what calcium uh, does is it's important in the role of making bones strong. Um, and many females suffer bone density issues and that is because low energy intake plus a heavy training load equals low production of the female horm hormone oestrogen. Now oestrogen has a role in calcium absorption in the bones and this, therefore this lack of calcium leads to a higher risk of bone fractures and particularly stress fractures in women, particularly in high impact sports such as gymnastics. So some of the pros and cons of minerals. Um, a con is an adequate diet counters any, any need for calcium and iron tablets. So that means if a female is, is drinks plenty of dairy or eats plenty of dairy products or um, has high protein in their diet, they shouldn't still not need um, having to take these minerals. Um, in some cases too much iron can be toxic so taking supplements when you don't need them can make you feel unwell. And one of the things that's common for all supplements, they're very expensive. So if you don't need to take them, um, it's costing you a lot of money for no benefit. Some of the pros of minerals is it's good. Calcium is good for female athletes with low energy intake, as already mentioned, and also iron tablets for, e for athletes competing in endurance events. So vitamins. The body only needs limited amounts of vitamins. What it, uh, what it vitamins the body doesn't use it actually excretes so taking vitamins in many cases is you know um, peeing your money down the toilet so to speak um, in some cases and overdoses of vitamins particularly vitamins A and D can actually be dangerous um, the marketing companies the sorry the people in charge of ma marketing from many vitamin companies have done a very good job of convincing the consumer that vitamins are necessary 
when in the majority of instances they are not. A couple of examples where they could be helpful is for an athlete who is having a long period of travel, particularly into some countries where having some dodgy food habits. Now, I'm not saying London necessarily has dodgy food habits, but maybe travelling into some Asian countries for the very first time. Um, athletes often worry about their diet um, and don't eat properly, so that could be an example where um, having iron, sorry, vitamins as a supplement could be helpful. So some of the cons of vitamins, they actually may give an athlete a false sense of security that they're um, eating properly just because they're, do um, they're getting the regulation amount of vitamins into their diet through tablets. Vitamins, vitamin supplements are often considered a replacement for a poor intake of fruit and vegetables. But the problem with that is um, vitamins don't actually give you all the goodness that fruit and vegetables do. And again, they're very expensive. Some of the pros, what's a good reason for taking vitamins? Um, as I said before, if an athlete's going on travel, they should probably consider taking vitamin tablets. And some athletes have a restricted dietary intake because either they are very fussy eaters or um, athletes with significant food intolerance or religious beliefs. So in those situations, vitamins could be an advantage. So moving to protein. Um, protein, as many of you would know, is important as it's necessary for building and repairing muscle. So in particularly recovery after training sessions, um, protein is important. Now there's some really good debate out there about whether there's advantages and disadvantages on protein. Um, my personal opinion is if you have a good diet it's actually not needed but there are many athletes who swear by it. Um, one of the things I encourage you to do in your riding is to make a judgment on it. Um, is it a good thing? Is it necessary? Or is it not? I don't think you'd necessarily be marked down either way as long as you can make your argument a good one. So let's have a look at some of the factors behind protein. A balanced diet provides all the necessary protein requirements. You don't need any more protein and that's been proven. An athlete may require a supplement when a practical way to consume sufficient food cannot be found. So the athlete has just done their heavy weight session at the gym and they may not be eating for a number of hours, then a protein supplement may have some benefit. Many protein supplements are also very expensive. Good alternatives to protein supplements include simply making them yourself. A homemade fruit smoothie added with 20 grams of skim milk powder um, added to regular milk um, serves the same purpose as a protein shake. Some of the cons of protein, as I said, balanced diet covers all your protein needs. It's very expensive. There's some calorie concerns. Putting on weight is something a lot of athletes don't want to happen if you start taking protein supplements. And some of the concerns of the contents, some of this industry is very unregulated. Many of the users buy this from on, directly on the internet from Asia or other countries and you can't be 100% certain of what you are buying. Some of the pros of protein, it is convenient, don't necessarily have to cook some of the meals, there's associated weight gain and also possibly good for vegetarians. Caffeine. Now here is I think a supplement which you gives the big tick that it is a real benefit to improving performance. So my argument would be that caffeine is a supplement that is very worthwhile. Um, caffeine is a stimulant to the central nervous system and research in indicates a benefit to some sports. Um, caffeine firstly will quicken reaction time. It increases mental awareness and therefore help prevent the athlete from feeling fatigued. So in, 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 in endurance events, that feeling of not feeling as fatigued can be very helpful. Some studies suggest that caffeine also stimulates the release of stored fats, which muscles can then burn for energy. Um, what this does is it depletes the onset of glycogen stores being depleted so quickly and as a result of that um, delays the onset of fatigue. So in, in essence, caffeine acts as a good way of saving energy in the body. Some of the cons of it, it causes tremors and dec decreases hand steadiness. So in some of the low arousal sports, maybe like shooting or archery would not be helpful. May cause withdrawal symptoms. Um, you can get addicted to caffeine and once you try to give it up, it can be a very difficult process. And also can work as a diuretic if, con if consumed several hours prior to exercise. So what that means, it could make you dehydrated if you had too much of it. It certainly has a benefit for endurance sports and where sports that require decision making under fatigue. So many team sports, um, many of the athletes are using uh, caffeine in some of those sports. 
creatine, which is the, the last of the supplements that we look at, um, it's a naturally occurring product. So what that means is the body actually produces creatine. And what happens in a lot of cases, it's been proven that extra doses of creatine are actually beneficial. Um, and that's why people take it as a supplement. It supplies energy where it's demanded. The chemical, sorry, the chemical is mainly used by athletes to increase their ability to produce energy rapidly. So it's more effective in um, making, speeding up the process of ATP. What that means is that um, the energy gets become more efficient, enab enabling athletes to be able to train harder. Um, some of the benefits, creatine assists the body and speeds up the process of regenerating ATP. Sports that have an ATP and a lactic acid energy system dependency will benefit. So many of the power and speed sports such as weightlifting or any sports that require strength can be hugely advantageous to be able to take in creatine. Muscles are less likely to fatigue and therefore weight training and sprints are two examples where performance would be increased. Some of the cons, be careful that you don't overdose. There can be, there is some information out there that it can have an effect on kidney performance. Um, there is potential for cramp and dehydration if enough water is not consumed while taking creatine. And certainly, because it's a relatively new supplement, there has still have been no long-term studies on the, the effects of creatine taking. So in terms of people who are regular creatine users, there could be some concern about the long-term side effects of taking creatine. But certainly in the short term, when it comes to sporting performance, particularly in power and speed sports, creatine is considered an advantage. So that supplement's done and dusted. Um, for more detailed information, either see your teacher, hit the textbooks, or do some more research online. Thank you for listening. For more information, you can get it at coachpdhpe.com.